Okay, right, guys, so the song we're looking at now is Songbird by Bernard Fanning. So uh, it's a really nice one for exploring sus chords. So maybe check out the, uh, the sus chords lesson before you jump into this one, just for a bit of an explanation. Um, but it's also good if you want to work on your bar chords, because it only really has one bar chord that it keeps coming back to. So it's a good way to sort of ease yourself into using bar chords a little bit more when you're playing. Um, the strumming is also kind of interesting. So uh, we'll look at a, a couple of the bits within it. Just remember that a lot of this information isn't really written in the chord charts, and this is going to be common for a lot of the songs that you guys look at, um, especially in this sort of this genre. So it's really about using your ears to hear all of these extra bits and pieces. So we've got capo on the second fret. The chords we're going to be using E minor, D, C, G, and B minor. Other than that, we've only got variation chords like D7s, some sus chords as well, which um, aren't really written in the chord charts, like I'm saying, but um, yeah, I'll explain when they do come up. basically the whole song. Um, so you can probably see there's a couple little things I'm doing with my fingers uh, moving between these chords. So to begin with for the strumming we're getting a bit of a bass note, sort of a pick down, a bit of a swing feel like a so I'm just changing the bass note I hit. I'm hitting the bottom string, fifth string, and at speed it's like a So I guess that's more the feel. If you want to add in extra strums or take them away, feel free to do so as well. So when I get to the D chord, we're going to a bit of a sus2 shape. So that's where we take off our second finger on the D chord. I'm also doing it with a bit of a hammer on. But if you don't want to do the hammer on, you can just strum it as well. Just remember when you're doing hammer-ons with a chord, I'm getting it reasonably loud, but it's not going to be as loud as the rest of the chord, so it's a very subtle sort of technique. Um, so if you don't get heaps of volume with it, that's okay, as long as you can hear that note coming through. So yeah. So there was a little bit of a variation on the rhythm there. So that time, instead of doing the of the little change I decided to strum the chords. But again same feel. With the C you can go to C major 7 just take off your first finger and then G same sort of feel so all of that together mm, I guess with that one too uh, if you don't like the sound of the bass note Remember, you can get a couple of strings. Or you can even strum the whole thing. They all give the same feel, so you choose what you want to do. Next one is B minor. It's a bit of an awkward change. We're going from G to B minor. Remember, you can keep either if you do G with four fingers or three fingers, doesn't matter, but keep your first finger there and pivot to the B minor. change to work on. Just focus on keeping that first finger in the same spot. Now we go to the B sus2. Take off your second finger. Just like we did with the D. Then back 
to C. C major 7 part again, back to B minor. And back to the C. So you can choose when you do the extra sus chords and when you don't, because there's certain parts where you can hear it in the song, but I mean, if you don't want to do it in certain parts, that's fine too. It's not like it has to be in certain parts, because it's not really the melody. The melody is the vocal part. Uh, it's more like a, I guess, a harmony part that we're doing in the background. So the way I'd play that whole verse... And then the whole thing repeats. For the chorus, you can change the strumming pattern a bit, probably good to bring it up a bit. And by that I mean strumming louder, using a bit more power in your strums, maybe even adding in extra strums. That's just going to A sus2, so just taking off the first finger. B minor. And going to the sus2 again. Then to C. C to then the C major 7, taking off that first finger. Back to G. Second time through that we do bit of a weird one. So that's going G G slash F sharp. So I'm just changing taking off my first and second finger, putting my first finger onto the second fret on that bottom string and then just strumming the open string. So the bass line goes... And you can just pick that if you want. Or you can do like a... And sort of hit the other strings as well. Whatever you prefer in terms of the sound. Then we go to the D chord. D sus2. So it's going... And then to D7. Then we get a D7 sus2, so we just take off our third finger, so it goes... It sounds complicated, but it is really just... Taking off the second finger, go to D7, take off the third finger. You can also add some open strums in between if those transitions are hard, and that sounds good, so if I go... Kind of sounds cool in there and it gives you a little bit more time to move between those chords. So that whole chorus. Then it repeats. So I'd say the hardest part of the song is probably that little end of the chorus, just trying to get that smooth. So feel free to take that slow and loop it a couple of times. Uh, but otherwise, that's basically it for practicing the song. If you're struggling with the B minor, I'd say just work on the verse to begin with. If you're finding that okay, try the chorus as well. And remember, you can simplify the strumming. If you're singing and playing in particular, really simplify it. You might just be doing like a... until you can coordinate the two and then you can put it all together. Um, so if you just want to jump into playing, that's all you need to listen to, you can stop now. But uh, one extra thing as well, if you're wondering who Bernard Fanning is, uh, he was also in Powderfinger, so a rock band. Um, so this album which it's from, um, I think it's Tea and Symphony, is uh, basically got a bunch of different acoustic, basically acoustic songs. They have a little bit of other instruments, but it's generally singer-songwriter stuff. Uh, I'd say it wasn't as popular as most of his Powderfinger stuff, but if you want to listen to it, good example of Australian sort of stuff. He's got a really unique voice, um, and it's got a very distinct style as well. So a good one to listen to if you want someone to emulate or you want other songs related to this.